Good morning, everyone. And welcome to Zion Lutheran Church in Fairwater, Wisconsin. It's a great place to be. So just a few announcements for you this week. Bible study members or people who are curious about Bible study, we will be meeting this Wednesday at 1.30. Um, what do you call that? The gathering room, the overflow room, we'll be, we'll be in there. So uh, you don't have to have attended any of them yet. Uh, it, it can be a one-shot deal. We'd love to have you. The fellowship is great and the learning is even better. Um, many of you have heard that um, Cindy Lenz is not doing well. She is still in the hospital. She has given permission uh, for me to share with you what she told me yesterday. Um, they don't know what's wrong with her. So she's got an infection of some kind, but that's about all they know. She is really wanting our prayers. She says every time, every day she feels our prayers. Um, but I think it's just been going on so long now. And the doctors are still clueless that if we could ramp up our prayers for Cindy, she's just so weak. Um, so no visitors, that includes me, no calls, that includes me, no texts. Um, so I'm grateful when she calls and lets me know how she's doing. So please don't go visit her, don't send her anything, just pray like crazy for her. So those are all the announcements I have. Bonnie, is she here? Bonnie, or anybody have another announcement to make? All right then, let's just kind of now bring our minds into a space of here and now with God, not later on this afternoon, not what happened last night. Let's just be here with God right now. Let us pray. Most high and mighty God, your anointed one offered himself freely as a witness against our violence, as a witness against our acts of oppression, as a witness against our sin. As you delighted to call him your son, give us the wisdom and the courage to bring you equal delight by our willingness to drink the cup of sacrifice on behalf of our brothers and sisters and with them offer you praise unceasingly and lives transformed as true heirs of your grace-filled realm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join along in singing our opening song.
The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 53. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed from our iniquities, the punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living, for the transgression of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, by righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong. Because he poured out his life unto death, he was numbered with transgressors, for he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 5. Every high priest is selected from among the people and is appointed to represent the people in matters related to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for his sins. He is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and are going astray, since he himself is subject to weakness. This is why he has to offer sacrifices for his own sins, as well as for the sins of the people. And no one takes this honor on himself, but he receives it when called by God, just an as Aaron was. In the same way, Christ did not take on himself the glory of becoming a high priest, but God said to him, you are my son. Today I have become your father. And he says in another place, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. During the days of Jesus's life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with the fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Son, through he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation. For all who obey him, he was designated by God to the high priest in the order of Michalstic. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Today's Gospel comes from St. Mark, the 10th chapter, beginning in verse 32. And they were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. And they were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. And taking the twelve again, Jesus began to tell them what was going to happen to him, saying, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem. And the Son of Man will be delivered to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles. And they will mock him and spit upon him and scourge him and kill him, and after three days he will rise. Now James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, We want you to do whatever we ask of you. And Jesus said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You don't know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, we are able. And Jesus said to them, 
The cup that I drink, you will drink, and the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized also. But to sit at my right hand or my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John, and Jesus called them to him and said to him, them, you know that those who are supposed to rule over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great men exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. <clears throat> Power. What does it mean to have power? Human beings have struggled with this simple little question since the beginning of time. Power. Is it when you have more physical brute strength or military might than others? Perhaps power is when you go to an event and they give you the best seat in the house. Or maybe it's when you just have to give the look. And immediately everybody stops what they're doing and jumps to do whatever you say. Then again, maybe power is simply whoever has the loudest voice and can keep shouting the longest over everyone else. If these are our understandings of power, then we have really missed Jesus' message. Jesus turns our concept of power upside down. For him, power means nothing like the things I just suggested. In our gospel reading for today, Jesus had just told the disciples what was going to happen to him in Jerusalem. They heard Jesus predict what he, the Messiah, the most powerful person on the planet, was going to have to go through. And he was going to be mocked, spit on, flogged, and crucified. Yet those, those disciples... It, it, it was like they weren't even listening to what he just said. They could not hear it. They could not bear it. Because immediately after Jesus just says what he's going to go through, those brothers Zebedee, doggone them, they started to negotiate for the seat closest to Jesus. Because Jesus is the mighty, all-powerful Messiah, right? Oh, man, with Jesus next to them, they could get into all the best clubs and restaurants. And this is so understandable. I mean, who of us doesn't want to be next to the most powerful when he comes into his glory? Then the rest of the disciples got angry when they caught wind of what was going on. They got angry because they didn't think of it first. And the Zebedee family might get more power than the rest of them. Jesus dealt so patiently with their request. He explained that it was God's decision who got to sit at his right and his left when he came into glory. And he challenged the disciples. Did they understand what he had just said? Did they understand what he, as a powerful Messiah, was facing? 
could they drink the cup he was to drink? Then came Jesus' important teaching on what power truly was. That the greatest, the most powerful, must become a servant to all. That's what power is. Holy cow, what a flipping of the concept of power. Jesus turns power right on its head. It's not power over, it's power to. Jesus had total power. He could have had power over others left and right. He could have wiped out that Roman military with the blink of an eye. Instead, Jesus used his power to, to empower others, to heal others, to feed others. He used his power to lift others up. He used his power to show others the powers that they have, that we have. He used his power to help others see that they were way more than how they were being treated in that time. Where can we do more of this in our day? I think we all know what Jesus' kind of power is. You know, we know how we feel, how tense and conflicted we feel when we're trying to have power over a person. You know, it just doesn't feel good because we're, we're in a fighting mode. We also know how incredible it feels when we use our power to, power to serve others. We just know how good that feels. For instance, when someone has died, we might feel powerless to do anything. I mean, we can't bring the dead back to life. We can't magically wipe away all the grief and pain. But we can bake a cake or deliver a casserole. Or we can sit quietly and listen to the family reminisce about their loved one. Or we can use our skills in technology so we can have a funeral service that gets broadcast. Or we know the family well enough to be able to share their desires so that everything at the funeral luncheon can be meaningful for the hurting family. I mean, really, how powerful do you feel when you know you got it right? You served someone when you've gotten a smile or a hug or a thank you from someone who's hurting. We know how to be powerful, like Jesus defined it. When an argument starts to escalate, we can hold our tongue, agreeing to agree to disagree, powerfully acknowledging the way to peace. We can refuse to fight with someone who's trying to antagonize us. That's power. Not to start a fight, to end a fight. We can give up our seat in a crowded place so someone may be comfortable. That's power. We can love our enemies instead of trying to annihilate them. It is intensely powerful to refuse to fall into hatred. This is what power is all about. The greatest among you becomes a servant to all. Remind yourselves daily of where you can find your power. Look around and see who might be in need of help, who you could serve. Think of what 
you might want or need if you were in their position. Don't wait to be asked. Go out. Be powerful. Serve. May it be so for you and for me. Amen. Please join along in singing our sermon song. Please rise as we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us turn to one another and share some love and peace. Made alive with God in Christ, we pray for the church, for those in need, and for all of God's creation. O Holy One, who comes to serve your people, transform us into servants and make us instruments of your will so that your justice and your peace may be accomplished. Lord, in your mercy, preserve the whole creation so that animals, plants, and land 
flourish. Protect endangered species and renew polluted waterways. Lord, in your mercy, accompany physicians, researchers, fundraisers, and relief workers who seek to eradicate preventable diseases such as COVID. Bring forth fruit from their cooperative efforts. Lord, in your mercy, ease the many burdens resulting from illness and mend the broken hearts that have been caused from grief. Be with those who suffer and make your people whole. At this time, we bring into our hearts and minds and silently name those we want to pray for. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, inspire the work and words of artists, authors, preachers, and teachers in the church. Use their gifts to proclaim your goodness to those who long to hear it. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for our closing song.
Now go in peace and serve the Lord. And all God's people said, Amen.